Uh, my name is Jiwan Min and I'm a clinical assistant professor at the Butchan St. Mary's Hospital. Um, I am a specialist in nephrology. Um, peritoneal dialysis is a way of removing waste products and excess fluids from your blood when your kidneys can't adequately do the job anymore. Um, so when you have end-stage um, kidney disease. A catheter is inserted into your peritoneum, um, into your abdomen, and a cleansing fluid is flown through um, this catheter into your peritoneal cavity. And then um, the lining of your abdomen, your peritoneum, acts as a filter um, and removes waste products and um, excess fluids from your blood. So after a set period of time, um, this uh, filtered waste products and then the fluid is removed from your abdomen and thrown away. Um, peritoneal dialysis in comparison to hemodialysis is recommended in patients mobile and patients who are able to manipulate their um, catheters to do the dialysis um, uh, by themselves. So they have to be able to link the fluids and then to discard um, the fluids after um, without contaminating the catheters. So um, hemodialysis is done by health professionals. Um, the patient goes to the hospital and the dialysis um, units, the dialysis nurses, um, they do all the different procedures um, for the patient. But peritoneal dialysis is done by the patient, by him or herself. Um, so they need to be able to keep a certain level of hygiene and a certain level of mental alertness. So, or they need help from caregivers, um, family or friends. So the benefits of peritoneal dialysis is that there is a better lifestyle, um, flexibility and independence um, as the patient does not need to go to the hospital. They don't need to visit the dialysis unit um, uh, three times a week, four hours every time. So, um, but, and also since peritoneal dialysis is done continuously, you have the fluids in your abdomen the entire time. So the, um, diet is also less restricted compared to hemodialysis and um, patients on peritoneal dialysis also retain their um, residual kidney function for a longer period mostly um, than hemodialysis patients. Um, first of all, you'll need an operation to insert the peritoneal dialysis catheter into your um, abdomen. So this um, catheter will carry the dialysate in and out of your peritoneal cavity. Um, the insertion usually done under um, local anesthesia and um, the tube is usually inserted near um, your belly button. So once the wound is healed, you'll um, be obviously trained on how to perform the dialysis um, by yourself. And um, first you will insert the dialysis through the dialysate, through the catheter into your abdomen, into your peritoneal cavity, um, where it'll dwell for usually about four to six hours. And during that time, the waste, um, waste products and excess electrolytes and fluids in your body will be transferred, will be filtered into the dialysate fluid. And then the, um, you, once the dwell time is finished, you would open the catheter and um, drain the um, dialysate fluid that has all the excess electrolytes, fluids and wastes. You, um, this uh, exchange is usually performed under different schedules um, according to the patient's um, lifestyle or um, uh, needs or wants. So mostly um, continuous uh, peritoneal dialysis is usually performed. Continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, we call it CAPD, is done usually on a regular basis during the daytime. So the patient would um, let the dialysate fl fluid um, dwell for about six hours and then they would do the exchange um, four times during the daytime. Um, there is also another method called the continuous cycling peritoneal dialysis, we call it CCPD or automated um, peritoneal dialysis. Um, this is usually done using a machine that will um, do the dialysis exchange during nighttime while you are sleeping. So there are different methods for different lifestyles. The most common complication of peritoneal dialysis is infection. Um, since um, there is a, a, a catheter that is linking the outside world to your peritoneal cavity, um, an infection can develop in your peritoneum or develop along the catheter or on the catheter insertion site. 
That is why adequate training and avoiding contamination of the catheter is very, very important um, for peritoneal dialysis. Secondly, um, dialysate is, um, is basically sugar water and it contains a lot of sugars. So um, some of this uh, sugar is absorbed into your body as well. So um, some patients um, may uh, experience hypoglycemia, um, higher blood glucose levels or um, a bit of weight gain due to the blood uh, glucose. And lastly, although it's not very common, we also because um, patients are holding large amounts of fluid in their abdomen during the day, this causes a strain on the muscles. So um, hernias can develop, um, inguinal hernias or umbilical hernias around the belly button um, where the muscles are weak. Diet in peritoneal patients is a lot more liberal compared to hemodialysis patients because um, dialysis is being performed 24-7 all the time. So patients can take um, different electrolytes, especially um, potassium and fluids, a lot more liberally compared to hemodialysis patients. Um, but patients still need to take um, care on taking too much um, fluids, too much salts, because then that could cause a bit of swelling. Um, also for uh, patients, especially on long-term dialysis, um, patients taking phosphorus. Phosphorus is usually, um, uh, it's, it's an electric that um, we find a lot in dairy products, um, in foods with a lot of protein. Um, those fluids contain a lot of phosphorus and this can be retained in the patient's body as well. And that, that can cause in the end um, uh, complications involving um, bone uh, metabolism. So um, we restrict a bit of the phosphorus or give patients medication to um, control the phosphorus levels. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, infection is the biggest complication, therefore it is um, our biggest precaution as well. So um, patients must always take care on um, when they are doing performing exchanges, they must take care on doing it very hygienically um, with minimizing contamination. Even the smallest um, amount of contamination can cause um, detrimental um, effects when, with the peritoneal um, infection. If the infection is um, severe, we have to remove the catheter and um, uh, stop the dialysis. So um, we always, um, first and foremost, um, precaution on infection for patients on dialysis, peritoneal dialysis.